morning, church family, and welcome to Homewood Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and we continue to worship the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together in the presence of our homes uh, and in the presence of our family. Will you join me as we are called to worship this morning? Brothers and sisters, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one, Jesus Christ, who called you out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. Let us begin this time in a word of prayer. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may fix our eyes on him and steadfastly follow in the paths of your kingdom. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We've been called by God and sealed in our baptism. Let us give thanks to God for his actions in our life. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. With water, you destroyed evil in the days of Noah. 
through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt and into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Christ, that he might lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, loving God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in the resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we remember how you have called and justified the community of faith together. Help us to know that we are a new creation through baptism, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Hear these words as we are called to confession this day. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. Friends, let us confess our sin, first silently, and then together with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray together. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Do not cast us away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. Beloved people of God, believe the good news. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. now pray together. O God, by your Holy Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. I invite you to listen carefully for this is God's word. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, Here I am. God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, 
whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. And Isaac said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 32 through 39. Again, I invite you to listen carefully, for this is God's Word. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven, said Jesus. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. These words of Jesus can be unsettling. They seem to tell us that the Christian life is not always going to be uh, painless or without problem. Jesus declares to his disciples that when they go to the places that he has called them to go, that they will encounter persecution, that they will encounter difficulty, and that these difficulties are not just going to be uh, from strangers to them. Uh, in the verses just preceding what I just read here, uh, it's actually going to turn mothers and fathers against their children or their children against their parents. Uh, it's going to turn every relationship that we have upside down. To follow Christ and to follow him faithfully is to live your life to a different standard. It is to live your life in different energy. It's to live your life with a different purpose. And that purpose that we live in uh, is to declare the resurrection. In Genesis 22, we read this very difficult story about Abraham being commanded by God to go and sacrifice his son Isaac. And as we think about a father who has been told to sacrifice his son, uh, we can all feel uh, that sorrow. We can all feel the tension that was in his life there. We don't read a whole lot about what was going on in Abraham's mind in uh, Genesis 22, but in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, we do have a, an insight into what was going on in Abraham's mind. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, we read this, by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac your offspring shall be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. So what was going on in Abraham's mind as he was taking Isaac uh, on a three-day journey? Uh, and had built an altar and had placed his son on the altar and was about ready to plunge a dagger into his son. What was going on in his mind? What was going on in his mind was he knew that God would provide. He trusted God in his word. God had given Abraham promises that he would have a son. And through that son, the world would be blessed. Through that son, there would be generations of people who would follow in his footsteps, in his footsteps of faith. And so as Abraham had experienced God in his life a little earlier, being promised a son when he was an old man, being told to look up to the stars in the sky 
and God telling him, you're going to have more descendants than numbers of stars in the sky than you can count. He knew that God kept his word. And when God spoke, God keeps that word. So in light of those promises, Abraham listens to God and faithfully follows him to the place where he was going to offer up a sacrifice. We know after reading this passage that as Isaac uh, was there, he uh, was upon that altar and Abraham was about to carry out what uh, God had commanded him when God intervened. When God intervened and provided a replacement, Abraham sees uh, off in the distance a ram stuck in a bush and he offers up that instead as the sacrifice to God. When we think about our lives and when we, what we have been called to, uh, we've not been called to sacrifice uh, our children. We've not been called to sacrifice our family or our parents uh, by God. But we have been called to take up our cross and to follow him. And I would argue that taking up one's cross it should be to us every bit as heart-wrenching and difficult as what Abraham was experiencing in Genesis 22. Abraham believed the promise of God, therefore he acted. He believed the promises of God to be true, and so he was faithful. As wild and strange as it may seem, and as many times as we may ask the question, why would God uh, ask him to sacrifice his son? We do have to know and understand that God does know what is going to happen. And though Abraham did not know it at the time, we were made aware that this was a test. And whether or not we want to agree with the way God tested Abraham, you know, that's kind of up to us, I guess. But at the end of the story, at the end of the day, when we see uh, Abraham and Isaac coming back over that hill to return home, we see a man and his son who believe the promises of God, who believe the promises of God to follow him wherever he leads. Jesus tells his disciples to take up their cross and follow him. And to us, uh, we fall into that category of disciples. And when we think about taking up our cross, our mind may jump from here or there, place to place. And there may be things that cause us fear and anxiety. There may be things that, that, that cause us to, to think twice about taking up that cross. One of the things we may look at and see is the fact that not everybody's going to like it if we take up our cross. Our friends and our family, our neighbors, co-workers, strangers, whoever may not like what it looks like when we take up our cross. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do we trust God enough? Each and every one of us have had an Abraham experience in our lives, an Abraham experience where God has called us and has called us to leave from our homes to go somewhere to serve him. Every one of us have had an Abraham experience when God gives us a promise, just as he promised Abraham would have a son that would be the father of many nations. God has given each and every one of us promises for our lives. And in every one of those promises, we know that God fulfills those promises. When times are difficult in our lives and we have to go through the burdens of, of, of loss and death, we know that the Lord provides for us the strength that we need to endure and to get through those times. Though we may not know how we would uh, make it through times of tragedy, in many ways we do. And we may look back and we can look into the mirror and say, you know, I did not think I could go through something like this. But the Lord provided. Many, many friends and family and I myself have have felt this, especially at the loss of a loved one, at the death of a loved one. Something that seems to be unbearable, but yet we all find the grace and the strength to remember our loved ones well and to worship God in the midst of that time of loss. Jesus does not pull any punches. He does not 
uh, try to hold anything back from us. He tells us that when we take up our cross, it's gonna, it could lead to some persecution and difficult times. But we have to remember Abraham, how the Lord provided for Abraham during his time. And we have to remember that God keeps his word through all time. And that as we are called, to serve God in the world, that he has gone on before us. Though we don't know what tomorrow brings, God knows. He knows because he has been there already. And so he calls us to enter into tomorrow where we don't know what's going to happen, but we can trust that God will provide. God will provide us the strength and the courage. He will provide us the comfort he will provide us the opportunity to serve him faithfully. All of this culminates in our worship of God. The response that we have to God as he uh, calls us to go from place to place uh, is our worship. Everything we do is worship. From waking up in the morning to going to bed at night. Uh, from going to work into coming home, for actually doing the work that we do at home. Though we may not necessarily see exactly how we are serving God, if we are, if we are serving God faithfully, we would, we'll be working to, to do our very best. We'll be working to make sure that the right things are being done. If, 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 all of those things that we do, anything that we can think of, it is an act of worship before the Lord. And so when Christ calls us, just as Abraham was called to go and sacrifice his son, and as we are called to take up our cross and follow him, uh, we, we must understand that the, the obedience that we have in those calls are acts of worship to the Lord. We're returning to the Lord what he has given. Abraham knew that he had no son until God intervened. And so just as Hebrews tells us, Abraham knew and trusted God. He trusted him when he promised to give him a son. And so he had, he had already had the faith in his mind and within his heart that the Lord is going to provide in, in this time. That if Isaac was the child of promise, then God would save him. He would save him either by stopping Abraham or through resurrection. And that's the promise that we live in as well. When God makes his promise, he keeps it. He provides. And so as we think about our lives, as we think about this moment that we are in, I want to encourage you to trust God above all things. To trust God because he is a God who provides. And so since everything we do is worship, let us have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised us is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Friends, this is our call. This is how we are to live, and may we do so, filled with the faith that we have in his promises, that he will always provide, and he will always be with us. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our faith together. The Church's Commission which is the foundation of its freedom, consists in this, in Christ's stead, and so in the service of his own word and work, to deliver all people through preaching and sacrament, 
the message of the free grace of God. We reject the false doctrine that with human vainglory, the church could place the word and work of the Lord in the service of self-chosen desires, purposes, and plans. The word of God will last forever. Amen. join me as we pray for the church, our nation, and for peace. Let us pray. O oh God, you have made one blood of all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Kindle, we pray, in every heart, the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, it was good to be with you today and worship. I pray that you have a blessed week and would like you to know that if you need to contact me for anything, you may send me an email or give me a call and uh, I would be more than happy to pray with you and talk with you about anything that is going on in your life. Uh, we continue to await uh, the reopening of our church, and so we hope to have some uh, more solid information about when we will be reopening. We are tentatively set to reopen for in-person worship here on Sunday mornings on July the 12th. And so we will 
keep our website updated as well as our Facebook page as to what the plans will be uh, in the next couple of weeks. Receive now this benediction. May the Lord of peace give you peace at all times and in all ways. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen.